So we're going to revisit the um, layer twisted stripes this morning um, because I was initially specifically asked to use the stripes um, and then I only used a couple last week um, and then somebody said yes that's all very nice but I'd still like to see all five so I'm going to use all five today but I'm not going to use many colours. Um, primarily only using two so initially I'm only going to be using these two but then as as we move on towards the end I'm going to add some early sunrise as well okay and I am going to be turning the stencils rather than the card because my card isn't cut to size so we're gonna we're gonna be using all five layers and we're going to be twisting it round as well as the name would suggest twisted layering stripes okay so i'm going to start with my juicy pineapple okay you can see here that i've got a piece of card by my side and that is really just to take off the excess ink because as i've said to you before i've used these now for a couple of weeks but they are still quite juicy okay so when you're using these stencils i think i said to you last time i used them because there is a lot of paper between these strips you have to be careful that you don't lift the stencil okay because it it will lift if you're overzealous with it so just go gently and you should find that it won't it won't budge too much but what you will risk if you go at it too harshly your stencil will move like this and you will end up with ink where you don't want ink because what you're obviously trying to achieve here is stripes isn't it and if you're overzealous with your inking and you go a little bit too heavy with your brush then you're going to move that stencil and you're going to end up with ink where you don't want it so you're not going to get like a, a proper stripey effect okay so we're nearly at the bottom and when you get to the bottom be extra careful because this bottom one will lift a lot easier than all the others because obviously you've got this tethered at the top here so the top bit isn't going to move particularly um, easily but because this bottom bit isn't sort of stuck down or anything you do run the risk of it moving so just be mindful of how heavy handed you are with your brush okay so that's my first layer and before i take this off i'm just going to put a pencil mark around the edges and down this side so that i know that i'm lining it up in the right place okay when i turn it round so i'm turning it round like that now lisa's ultimate takes a lot of the guesswork out of your stenciling because you can go back in and add it to your pegs time after time after time and nothing's going to move because you're moving these around it's it's one of the few times i would advocate taping your stencil down just to minimize the risk of it moving and um, it, it's just it's just not worth worrying about it so i'm taping it down in four places just so that it's a little bit more secure okay and then i'm going back in with the same color again not being too heavy handed so that i don't lift that mylar and i don't end up with ink where i don't want it now i'm going not too heavy with this yellow because there's three colors going on here and you don't want to don't want to go too heavy with the first lot Brown flakes and blueberries, yogurt and banana at lunchtime. Mm, sounds nice. I like blueberries, but I don't know that they, they don't seem to keep very well. I don't find. Um, I always find I always find a lot of them a little bit soft and and a bit mushy. Um, I went a bit heavy-handed there, didn't I? That's because I didn't take my ink off my brush. But never mind. Hopefully that will just sort of blend into insignificance 
as we go along. It's one of the fiddlier stencil sets, but I think once you've once you've mastered it and you've experimented with colours, yes, Tony, I I have done that before. Um, if I show you this piece, I cut this with the stitch bubble squares, and I turned the card around rather than the stencil because I I cut a piece that would fit my stencil exactly. So I left my stencil in place and I turned my card. Um, so yes, you can. You can do it either way. But because my card isn't cut to size here, I can't do that with, with this particular piece because it wouldn't line up properly. Okay. But yes, you can do it, providing you cut your card first. Okay. And then all I did around the edge so that I hid all the sort of over inking bits round the side was I just went round it with um, a sharpie pen so that you can't see any of the ink that went over the stitched line and I just think it finishes it off so you could use that as a background piece on in its own right really um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to stencil all five stencils for you but then I've already cut a piece yesterday that I did yesterday um, and I've used the nested pocket builder and the um, pocket flowers as well to make my card so we are actually putting a card together as well all right so I'll take my tape off as I say it's one of the few times I would advocate using tape so that's layer one now I'm not twisting every stencil, okay? I decided when I was when I was doing my piece yesterday, I decided that I wouldn't twist every single one because I didn't want to really. I just wanted to have a little bit of interest in the background and I didn't want to just go way over the top. This one is all five stencils twisted round. So, you know, it, it's quite a busy pattern. If you didn't want it that busy, you don't have to have it that busy. It's, you know, personal choice that it's entirely up to you. So we're going back in here with our next layer, layer two. And I'm using the sugar candy here. I've decided this is probably my most favourite colour. It's just fabulous. It's a beautiful beautiful pink on its own but when you start and blend it with other colors oh my word it just gives such such gorgeous blends it, that's beautiful beautiful color now you can see as the apertures get a little smaller the mylar doesn't move quite as much but you still need to be reasonably um, not too heavy handed otherwise you will lift your stencil like you saw me do just then so I would always hold each each strip down just just to give yourself the peace of mind that things aren't going to move too much um, I, I don't think you will ever stop it moving completely because of the nature of how the stencils are but I don't think it will move enough to spoil anything if you're careful okay right now then am I going to turn this one round or aren't I yes I think I will so I've already got my marks where I drew around the first piece and then I'm just going to line that up and then tape it down just to be on the safe side you can see I've used these pieces of tape quite a lot and I find that if you reuse and reuse and reuse until it's actually got no sticky at all you stand less chance of ripping your card when you take your tape off now I ripped mine down here but I'm not bothered because I'm not going to be using that bit so it's not going to make any difference so I just carry on down these stripes and you can see that 
a lot of the ink that I'm getting on here is from ink that was on the stencil from my first when I got it the other way around so you don't necessarily have to keep re-inking your brush because you can take a lot of the ink actually off the stencil you can add a little bit as you go along if you want it to but because it sits on that stencil you can take a lot of that colour off without re-inking your brush and it'll give you a lighter colour as well because obviously you're because you're taking the ink off the stencil it's not going to be as not going to be as intense a colour but again personal choice if you want to I mean if you want to wash them between stripes you can do personally I wouldn't bother but there we go so layer two okay pretty so now we're going in with layer three and you can see that the, the strips of mylar are getting bigger um, now I'm going to stick with pink. I think I'm going to stick with pink on here. And I might not turn this one round. I'll see when I take it off at the end. Because this is going to give me a, a totally different pink to the pink that's going the other way. Because obviously a lot of this pink is on white card. So you can see already that it looks like proper pink. Now, obviously, I'm not, you can see, I'm not taking any ink off this, off this brush at all. Um, because I quite like this, the deepness of this pink on here. So I'm, I'm literally going ink pad to card. Because I want that, I want that vibrancy. And again, when you get down to the bottom, just be careful because it's going to move at the bottom easier than it's going to move anywhere else because this bottom strip here is quite thin you see the different colors on my nails this is where i'm stenciling this morning and i was going to do my nail polish last night and i thought it was pointless really okay so there's a, an already different look to the one i did last last thursday um, and this is, as I've said, just two colours, okay? So, depending on the look you want, will depend on how many colours you use. You don't have to do it like this. Stay to my hands. Um, you could do it at an angle if you wanted to, and just use the middle of the stencils, just to give you some interest in the background, so that it was sort of like behind a design. So you could turn them that way, or turn your card, and just ink through a little bit of the stencil you don't have to use the whole lot it's entirely up to you so number four let's see where the stripes come on number four over the top of there so i think we'll go with the early sunrise now i'm using one of my stencil brushes here because i want this to be quite dark um, and obviously the the aperture is quite small on here so there's there's a lot more a lot more mylar on here and it's easier to get the ink in that aperture with a stencil brush than it is with a wonder brush and i think i said to you last week that i use the wonder brushes on these stencils particularly because they're domed okay so because these are domed these fit in these apertures a lot easier than if you use your bijou brushes because these are flat and some of the mylar is sort of quite close together, I think you would find it difficult to get your colour into those apertures. So, you know, there's there's a brush for every use, um, every technique rather. And I think, you know, they all work alongside each other beautifully. So I actually want this to be really quite vibrant, which it is. Lovely. And again, like I say, because I'm using the stencil brush, I am sort of not flooding, but actually really filling 
that gap with ink, which is what I wanted. If you wanted to go really, really bold, of course, you could add a, a blue in here if you wanted to. Um, I did do that on the, the piece that I'm going to show you that I've used for my card. is quite different. I've used these two colours, but I also use Tranquil Waters. And you'll see that it looks completely different. So I am going to go round with this one. I'm going to turn this one round. And I'm only going to stick this in two places because, because it's a bit thicker. There's less chance of it moving. Okay. So you see that was a lot quicker because the apertures are a lot smaller. Oh, I like that. So then number five. Number five should be over the top of that pink. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to turn it around. I'm only going to use it one way. So I'm not going to use it the ordinary way. I'm going to use it this way. I'm just going to put one stripe down here. But again, this is going to be quite quick because these apertures are quite small. So I've used all five. I haven't necessarily twisted all five. You can, of course you can. But I didn't want to. I didn't want that, that much dizziness in the background. As I showed you on this one. I find this one quite busy. Which is fine, providing you've got something bold to put over the top of it and use it as a background. I mean, you could you could cut it up if you wanted to. You could cut shapes out of it if you wanted to. The choice is yours. Okay, that'll do. Considering there's only three colours on there, I actually think that looks quite cool. Um, I mean, if you did it all in one colour and then just put a highlight colour through perhaps stencil number five... It would be good for um, backgrounds on baby cards or something like that. Okay, so that's just three colours. I actually I quite like that. I shall use that on something, pockets or whatever. But that is that is how quick. What was about twenty minutes to use all five stencils um, and twist them as well. So you see, it doesn't. It doesn't take you very long, so long as you're careful. Um, and you, you just want to avoid that lifting of your stencils all the time. Okay, so let's just run through the card that we're going to make. So, we're using a 7x7. Seven seven, and you can see here in the background, I've used the blending, uh, the pigment ink. And I've used the texture stamps. And I've just stamped a little bit of interest in the background because I want to bring all the colours together. Okay, so I'm using the same colours in my card, my flowers, everything, so that it all ties together. So the piece that I did yesterday, you can see I've cut my pieces out already, is um, sugar candy, juicy pineapple, and tranquil waters. Okay, so you can see that it's a completely different look depending on the colours that you use. And then this was the one that I did yesterday as well. Um, again, just turning them in different ways. These are the same colours that I've used today, but they look completely different because I haven't turned every stencil on this one as I have on this one. And I still haven't turned every stencil on this one. So it just goes to show you that you will never get the same thing twice unless you write it down and you know that you'll follow it to the letter. You won't get the same effect twice. Um, it's very difficult to get the same effect twice. So I've got three backgrounds there that I can use on other cards. And then this is the one that I'm using for my card today. So, as I said, 7x7 seven seven stencil. And then I'm adding a square onto the background so you can see now that there's only a little bit of my stamping showing that's absolutely the look that I wanted 
Okay, so you can see I've already put my put my sticky pads on here yesterday. Did a lot of prep yesterday so that this part was quick because I knew how long the stenciling would take me. Okay, so I've popped that down in the background. So I've got my little bit of stamped interest in the background in the same yellow that I've used on my stenciling. So you can see here I've got yellow on here. So that's why I've used yellow in the background. Now obviously you can see that I have cut a pocket. Um, and I've cut two pieces. So I've cut the, the flap of the pocket. I've also cut a little button. Um, and this is in Lisa's satin card. Okay. So this is going here. But I'm not going to stick this down yet. Because I want my leaves and my flowers and things to actually sit behind this pocket. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw myself a line here so that I know where the pocket will come to. It's only a very faint line. You can't really see it, but there is a line there. Okay, now I've already done all my flowers. And as I said, I've used the floral pocket petals haven't used the stamps I've just die cut the flowers okay and I've cut them in two different color pink cards but then what I did was use the sugar candy and just brush the edges of the petals so that it all the right colors blend in okay I'll just put those to one side so these are my these are my flowers so there's only three flowers because I don't think you need many more than that I've also cut the leaves and you can see I've also got some hearts and the hearts are from the Simply Heartfelt set. So to just reach my leaves and my little hearts. Now I'm going to put my leaves down first. And because I've drawn my pencil line, I know where my leaves are going to sit. Okay. So I've got my two larger sets of leaves here, which are going to sit just inside my pocket. And then I've got another large set here. All right. Then what I want to do is add two of the hearts going one way in that gap and two of the hearts going the other way in the other gap. And then I might decide to put the smaller leaves on the top of those. But we'll see as we go along. So let's use my glue. Now, little tip with my glue. You know, we've always said cut the very tiniest piece off the end of your glue. I didn't do that with this. I used a long pin, um, I mean these have been around for years, and I just stuck my pin through the end of the bottle, like so, okay? So I've just made the smallest hole in the top, so I haven't actually cut any off at all, and I've found that that gives me enough glue flow so that I don't have to cut any off. Just a little tip, it might be worth using if you want to. So you can see now I don't get a huge blob of glue like I was before. So I've just put my first leaf down here. And obviously I'm using Lisa's fabulous glue that will stick anything to anything. So I've put my leaves down here. And then this one is going in the middle here. Now it's going to sit behind that flower. So I know it's in more or less the right place. And it's not going to. It's not going to disappear. And you're not going to see the ends either. So if I just pop my flower there. And then I'm now going to put that in the right place. Okay. So there's my leaves done. Now I want to put my hearts down. Now I'm only putting the glue actually on the back of the hearts because there's no point putting it anywhere else because the flowers are going to hide the tips of the, the hearts anyway. So those are going so that they sit inside the pocket. So they'll go there and then the other two will go the other side. I do like a bit of symmetry. But not necessarily central symmetry, if you know what I mean. So these two are going here. 
you can see I've taken those quite a way behind that line because the stems are quite long but once I've put my pocket down you won't see those anyway okay right so now I can add my pocket because I know that I haven't got anything else to pop behind that pocket all right so I'll take my pads off the back it's always worth planning it out before you stick it down um and i thought about this yesterday i would i would normally just stick the pocket down and then put everything else around it um but i thought about it afterwards and i thought if i've got um sticky pads here these aren't going to slot down behind it so that was why i did it the way i did it so if i pop that down and i can line this up along the stitch line so that it's level okay so you can see my leaves sit behind my pocket now and then my flowers are going like that okay now then do i add those extra leaves i think i will because it's going to hide some of those stalks yeah i don't think it's going to look too busy and I do like these leaves, I think they're really pretty. Whoops. So if I pop that there, it's hiding most of those stems on the hearts. And it just gives an extra little bit of interest. Now, I am going to add these flowers with my 3D glue gel. I wasn't going to, but I've thought about it now. And I think they'd look better. I've shaped all the flowers. Um, you all know how to shape the flowers, don't you? Rub the back so that it sits up and then turn it over and push the middle in. So I want that to sit so that you can just see the button under here. And then one either side. And then all I've got to add to that is my sentiment. Now I've got a choice on sentiments because when I did this yesterday, when I prepped it all, I cut it in one colour and then I thought, hmm, there's a lot of that colour on there. Maybe I should have done a different colour. So the choice in the sentiment is going to be up to you. Okay. So this was the one I cut yesterday. This is from the uh, Bold Phrases set. And I cut that one and I thought, yeah, I like that. And then I looked at it again and I thought, actually, the only bit of yellow is around the edge here. So I cut another one in yellow. So which one should I put on the card? Choice is yours. Yellow, yellow, um, two to one on yellow, three. Or yellow it is then okay so I've only put my pads on one side because I want this to sit level with this pocket so if I put pads all the way across then it, it's it's gonna sit it's, it's gonna be wonky it's not gonna sit level okay so I've put pads this side and then I'm gonna pop a little bit of glue on this side just so that it sits all on one level so back to Lisa's glue. Not very much at all. Don't need much. Okay. So there you go. There's your stenciled background. Cut out your pocket. So there you go. Three colours of Lisa's inks. One set of stencils to make my background, to make my pocket. I just think it's a really fun, bright, funky card. Um, perfect for sort of more modern, you know, like younger people. Although I know quite a lot of older people that would like that as well. So that's my card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to see so many of you here again. Have a fabulous weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you all again on Monday. Bye, everybody. Thank you.